Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about Mantle. So, recently I purchased an R9 270, and I got to do some benchmarking with it, and I got to have a bit of fun with this card. Now, the reason why I got this card was because, um, it's a little bit of a long story, but I had to, I couldn't basically use the GDX 670 at work after I'd finished making videos for the school, so they wanted to put it back in their main rig, and that's fair enough. So I managed to purchase one of these, and I wanted to test an AMD card, because a lot of people have been telling me good things. And now this card is definitely good value for money at $190. If you want to check out the review for this card, I will put the link in the description below for you guys. However, today I'm going to be specifically testing Mantle on Battlefield 4, because I wanted to run some tests for myself. And anyway, let's get on with the results. Okay, so moving on to benchmarks, I've got two different tests here. I did a single player test. Uh, this was done on the test range. Again, we did 25 seconds, uh, three times on each. And this time around, interesting thing about comparing DX11 to Mantle was that I had to use a actual command in the console because I wasn't able to use fraps with Mantle. So you had to type in uh, perf overlay frame file log enable one and zero and you had to toggle with that to enable it and disable it so i did that and initially i used fraps for dx11 however i did get slightly higher results a slightly lower fps scores when i did this on the um, dx11 however when i did compare apples to apples when i typed the same console command into the dx11 scores this is what i got and i decided to use the apples to apples comparison right if i'm using the console command for mantle then i'm going to use it for dx11 as well so when i did the tests on both using the same console command and calculating the average fps i actually couldn't calculate minimum or maximum because it only displayed CPU draw time, uh, frame draw times, which you then had to um, calculate the average and divide that into 1000. Uh, so anyway, we did that and we got here the average score on DX11 was I think it was 77.51 frames per second. So it was um, that was good on the single player benchmarks I did. This was at ultra two times MSAA speeds. We then moved on now to and I had the card overclocked for all these tests because I think that's if you're running a graphics card like an R9 270, especially the 270, 270X you may wish to think about overclocking, but the 270 should definitely be overclocking it for free performance. So that's what I did. Now we, we went over to the single player here on Mantle, we got 77.86. So there was virtually no difference between the two. Uh, I will put my link, uh, my the spec of my rig in the description below but my cpu was clocked at 4.6 gig it is a 4670k so it is pretty much one of the better gaming cpus out there uh and so yeah there was just absolutely no difference in single player i was kind of surprised i thought mantle was going to make a difference it made absolutely no difference in single player uh both were very playable both seemed very smooth now moving over to the multiplayer benchmarks this is when mantle did score slightly higher however i will reiterate that this is a multiplayer benchmark and there is going to be variance so now i played on operate i played on a level called operation locker it was team deathmatch and basically I joined the game and I could quickly, it was the start of the game so I could do the benchmark on DX11 and then I could quit, change to mantle and do the same benchmark. So it's pretty much done with the same players, same map um, and we found that the single player here scored 76.55 frames per second and when we move over to mantle we scored 79.33 so there was a slight increase in fps uh, however i would put that down to variance as it is a multiplayer benchmark and if i probably ran this a few times would get some differing results and one thing i will tell you about mantle is when i was running this benchmark there was some really big stutters going on with mantle i didn't notice this on dx11 so I thought, man, it was hard to say, but yeah, I wouldn't, if I was playing multiplayer or single player with BF4, I'd probably be sticking to DX11. Uh, that's just because of the, the multiplayer stuttering was, some of the stuttering that happened was actually pretty damn huge. So anyway, let's move on now to the conclusion. So in conclusion, I can, I mean, when I did my tests, I found that there was virtually no difference between DX11 and Mantle on my R9 270. I thought uh, AMD said there was about a 7 or 8% increase 
if you have a high performance or a CPU like a 4670K. Um, I have a 4670K and I clocked it to 4.6 gigs, mind you. Uh, but I found there was just no difference. I mean, it, it might make a difference in CPU intensive times, but uh, definitely in GPU bound scenarios, I found there was no difference at all. So the single player benchmark, it was virtually identical. The multiplayer benchmark, there was like, I think there was three, a difference of three FPS. And you, I mean, if I ran that test numerous times, I would have probably have gotten different results. So it was a multiplayer benchmark. Uh, so anyway, yeah, in conclusion, I will say that um, this graphics card is great value for money, but I wouldn't be buying it for the sole purpose of Mantle if you're a BF4 player. Um, if you're maybe other games, they might implement it a lot better, but definitely as it stands, this thing on Battlefield 4, this is the latest drivers, by the way. I'm using the latest driver set as of March 26. Um, this was the latest beta drivers. It just didn't, yeah, it didn't show me any uh, viable increase. It didn't show me anything. And if anything, I thought DX11 played more smooth. I mean, there was some big stutters going on when I used Mantle. So I don't know what's going on there either. So all in all, in a nutshell, I, yeah, I, I mean, for Battlefield 4, I just can't really see what the big deal with Mantle is. So... Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Tech Yes City, where I'll be coming back with more juicy tech videos for you guys. Uh, if you haven't already, I'll put the link in the description below for the R9 270 review of this graphics card. It is a really nice graphics card. It is a nice mid-ranged, um, reasonably priced graphics card. Great for a mid-range build. Anyway, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.